Hey gang, and welcome to the first ever pre-recorded Everybody Wants England. And uh, you know what? I mean, I love doing lives, but I'll be totally and completely honest with everybody that's watching this, that it was a lot more relaxing to watch these movies at my own pace. And I was going to try to get this uploaded by eight o'clock, but then I was like, why am I doing that? As long as I get it on here and uploaded by midnight, technically it's Tuesday night, right? So um, I think I'm going to take that strategy from here on out for the pre-recorded things. I'm not going to say, hey, this is going to be up at eight o'clock because that's just putting me right back in the oh my gosh, I got to, you know, get these movies watched and I got to do this and I got to do that. And if I don't get off from work or I have to work over or whatever I have to do, um, that puts me behind on finishing movies. And if I got three movies I need to watch and I'm too tired the night before to start watching them, which frankly I have been uh, here as of late, um, and then I'm busy at work and don't get any free time to watch it because I've got to be concentrating on whatever I'm doing and I can't divide my time between work and watching a movie. So that's kind of what happened today. So it was just so relaxing to go sit in the living room and watch these movies at my own pace. I even got some dinner done for tomorrow. I actually ate a piece of it. It was a pizza casserole, um, which it was it was pretty good if I did make it myself. Um, also, you may notice that I have a, a, a new, like, t-shirt design on. Now, this is not my preferred method of putting an image on a shirt. And the reason being is this is like the old t-shirt transfers, only it transfers a little bit better and a little bit easier when you're using a, a heat press, okay, as opposed to an iron or one of the Cricut presses that are like irons. It's easier to get it to stay down and, and all of that. However, I'm not real fond of how it just lays on top of the shirt. You know, it's it's not my preferred method. But for now, with the darker colored shirts, if I'm putting a design on it, the sublimation's just not going to come off properly. Now, when I am able to afford a cutting machine, I will be able to use um, heat transfer vinyl for sublimation. And that's going to be awesome. Now, you may be thinking, well, why the heck do you got to get a cutting machine to do that, Dana? Why don't you use scissors? Well, because the videos I have watched that tell you how to do it that way, they tell you to use the software that comes with the cutting machines. Now, you can open that software. You can download that software, but you can only get so far. And then it says, oops, sorry, you don't have a cutting machine uh installed or you know plugged into your computer a cutting machine's not found so therefore it won't let you go any further so that's why i have to have the cutting machine i don't know why they do that i guess to make you spend more money right so um i hope everybody likes this design because this is the design that if you pick a and i'm sorry i keep scratching inside my ear but I guess it's allergies or something. This ear is just itching me like crazy. Um, if you get a Deadites on Deck, and I, I'll show you, it does say Deadites on Deck on the bottom. It says Evil Dead Chicken, and it says Deadites on Deck on the bottom. I think I told you guys and gals wrong, uh, and I said that instead of having Evil Dead Chick, it would have Deadites on Deck. And I may change it up here on down the road and this ear is just driving me crazy and there's no way that you can like get it to quit itching uh because you can't you can't get your finger down in there without injuring your ear 
Um, and it's just, you know, every time I get on here, it just seems like something just is driving me crazy, whether it's bugs flying around me or my ear itching or something on my glasses or, you know, whatever. It just never fails. But um, anyway, before this just drives me crazy, I probably should get to these movies soon. Okay. So, this is the design that you will get if you uh, join the $25 a month Patreon. Uh, either you pick a hat, a t-shirt, or a mouse pad with this design on it. Okay? That's the design right now for Deadites on Deck. Okay. So, what do we got coming up for the rest of the week before I get started with these movies? So, uh, tomorrow we have... And Apples and Oranges is going to be live. Uh, basically, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I will do lives. Except Terra Time Tea is going to go to being pre-recorded. Uh, I can record it at any time of the week. Uh, and then premiere it on Friday morning. Hopefully. <laughs> and uh, so... Um, so tomorrow night will be a live apples and oranges because I think those are interactive um, and they should be interactive because they're kind of, usually I try to pick debatable topics where we can have a friendly debate, right? So um, tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern time, I will be discussing Night of the Living Dead 90, the Tom Savini take on George Merrill's Night of the Living Dead. And uh, we'll be talking all things Night of the Living Dead 90. We'll be talking about George Romero's version, how the two compare. And uh, if you're in here, you can talk about which one you prefer um, and why. You know, I'd love to hear people's difference of opinion. Okay. So, Thursday night will be a pre-recorded um, Seductive Poison and Resurgence Triple Threat Review Show. Uh, me and Candace will also be recording our first episode. It's going to be pre-recorded, folks, because, to, you know, I, can't, I just can't do lives on both channels. So, primarily, Waiting on Woodstock will be uh, pre-recorded material. Occasionally, we may do watch-alongs for movies from the 60s or about the 60s or uh, supposed to take place in the 60s, but not really. Um, we'll, we'll probably be throwing some of those things in there. We might have a Ask Us Anything show that's, uh, that's a, a live stream. Um, but those will be few and far between on the Waiting on Woodstock channel. Because um, I can't, <laughs> I just can't stretch myself any thinner than than I, I already have. Uh, but I still want to put out content, right? And I want the sister channel to be a success as well. So, um, me and Candace will be recording the first episode uh, of for Waiting on Woodstock. And it will be talking about the original Woodstock Music Festival. And we'll compare it with the disastrous <laughs> second Woodstock that was, believe it or not, put on by the same guys that did the original Woodstock. It just a uh, different time, I guess. But we're going to be talking about all of that uh, when we pre-record um, Waiting on Woodstock or the, you know, in, uh, the uh, first episode for Waiting on Woodstock, I guess I should say. And Friday, of course, you will get a pre-recorded Terror Time Tea. And I'm going to be talking about, um, well, I guess I could tell you the movies I'm going to be talking about on Seductive Poison or Resurgence Triple Threat Review Show. Uh, I am going to be talking about Chaos and Don't Look in the Basement and Child's Play. And then Terror Time Tea. I will be talking about Night of the Creeps and the Unholy. That's kind of a blast from my past, the Unholy is. Um, 
So Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, me and Candace will be live for Friday Foolish. And we will be talking about our favorite horror masks and horror characters. So be, uh, be sure to tune in for that Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. If you can't watch it live, you can watch it on the replay. Um, we've got a couple of watch-alongs coming up this weekend. Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time will be Wes Craven's New Nightmare. Um, that was one that I was planning on doing a couple of weeks ago and was too wiped out to do so. Um, Sunday's watch along, also starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, will be for Stanley Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange. So be t sure to tune in for both of those if you can. Uh, and if you cannot, like I said, you can watch them on the replay. That's what the great thing about being able to do these recordings and being able to put stuff out on YouTube is that usually it's always there and you can watch it. You don't necessarily have to watch it live if I do a live. All right. So without further ado, and I've talked for 12 minutes, we'll go ahead and get to these movies and I'll give my rating and uh, then I'll get off of here for the night and get this uploaded uh, so that people can watch it if they choose to. All right, so the, the first movie uh, that I want to talk about is Black Swarm. Yes, I finally watched Black Swarm from 2007, and uh, Robert England plays a good guy. He, play, he plays kind of like a mad scientist type of guy, but in the end, he's a good guy, all right? Um, and his name is Eli. The little girl in the, the movie calls him Mr. Eli all the time. And uh, I think it was a really good character for for Robert England. Um, so, yeah, the story's a little hoagie. The special effects, a lot of CG in it. Um, but I think Robert England was fantastic in it. Um, I had fun with with the movie. I mean... Yeah, the CG was kind of, eh, you know, but that's the that's the way it goes with CG, right? So, um, so you have these, I guess, genetically altered wasps that basically Eli has helped the government create, kind of like a a, a weapon you know, to use on enemies. But he's starting to lose control over the wasps. And we see the wasps attacking people and turning them literally into drones. They're a lot like zombies in a, in a George Romero movie. They're just, oh, and they've got sting, swelled up places where the, the wasps have stung them. And, you know, as is usual in a lot of movies, the government people are not good people, right? So they want to, basically, they want to rule the world. They want to take over the world, and they're using Eli's discovery to try to do that. And so they get this little girl, her, her and her mother have come back to town after her mother being gone for many years, back to her hometown. And so these bad government people kidnap the little girl and um, try to make her the queen for these for these wasps. And um, so craziness ensues. Um, a lot of zombie looking people walking around the town going, oh, and stuff. like I thought of it as like a, a cross between. A, an insect attack movie and a zombie film, right? And then you had Robert England thrown in there for good measure. You got explosions, you got gunfire, you got genetically altered wasps, you got Robert England in a great role where he really got to show off like nice guy Robert England instead of, you know, bad guy Robert England, <laughs> which he's done plenty of both. He's a very versatile actor, as I've said many, many times, and he pulls this off splendidly as the character of Eli in Black Swarm. And uh, 
good luck finding this one for free on YouTube or anywhere else in an English language version. I don't know why every version I saw anywhere was not in English because this is obviously a, a you know English speaking people in this film. Um, maybe it was copyright or something like that. Maybe they could get by as long as they showed it in a different language or or, or what was the deal. But Steve was able to find me a <clears throat> copy somewhere. <laughs> and I was finally able to sit down and watch it today. So what rating would I give to Black Swarm? Well, I am going to, I know guys and gals, I don't have my halves yet, right? But imagine a half there. I'm going to give it three and a half stars. That's because the story was fun, despite, you know, the the iffy CG. Uh, and Robert England's character was fantastic as Eli. Um, so I'm giving it three and a half stars for all of that. It's well worth a watch. Uh, I would definitely recommend it if you can get your hands on a copy of it for free, of course, you know, um, so I'm sure a lot of you that watch the, the stuff that I do know these other avenues that you can go to besides going on YouTube and Tubi and uh, archive.org and all those other places to try to find stuff. Um, there are... Uh, there are other avenues, although I'm not going to talk about them on here, right? All right, so the next movie I watched was Night of the Sinner, and that's S-I-N-N-E-R. Uh, Steve thought I was saying center, and I said, no, sinner. Uh, this is from 2009. This movie, to me, was a lot like a jello. It started out like a jello. You had a black gloved killer you have sharp implements um you have gruesome deaths um you have a mystery surrounding all this stuff um and you have mr robert england in this too um so um i believe it takes place in italy and this woman is i believe she's doing research um I, that's what I, you know, I was watching this and cooking dinner as well. Um, but let me just, I'm not going to read to you guys off of the IMDb. I'm just going to, um, okay, so the woman uh, that, that comes to Italy. Um, she's an insurance agent um, and she goes to Italy in order to evaluate the library of an eccentric prince and the eccentric prince is played by Robert England. Um, but she's gonna get more than she bargained for because uh, the prince has a terrifying past and there's a lot of evil uh, going on in this movie and a lot of twists and turns, a lot of mystery, a lot of Jallo elements. I ain't even gonna lie. So if you like Jallos, I think you will really like this. I was telling Steve about, I was like, it's, it's a lot like a Jallo, Steve. I said, I think you, you would like it and you can watch it for free on YouTube. And it's a, it's a good copy of it, a very clear, pristine copy. Um, I like the, the death scenes in it. I like the mystery. I liked watching how things played out in this. And I like the uncertainty about Robert England's character of the Prince in this. Um, it was it, it was fantastic. I would think one thing and then think another thing and then go back to my original thoughts. So it was a lot of fun kind of going for a ride with this movie and uh again if you like jallos and it, it was like part jallo and part slasher film to me so i think there was a little more jallo in this than a slasher film 
Um, I would definitely highly, highly, highly recommend this one. I'm not, I'm trying to be a little more discerning. I know TJ laughed at me one night when I was saying that. He said, now, now you're being, you know, choosy. Um, but I'm not going to give it a five, but I am going to give it a four deadites out of five. Uh, really good movie. Uh, really suspenseful. Um, some really spectacular, in my opinion, kills. Jallo-like kills in this. Um, it starts off with a bang, and it doesn't really let up during the whole film. I don't remember any slow parts in the film. And Robert Englund, of course, is fantastic. That man could act in anything. He could be anything you want him to be. And I've become more and more convinced of that as I went, went through these movies for everybody wants England. So, definitely uh, check this one out on YouTube while it's still up there because, you know, you never know. It could, you know, go away tomorrow or the next day. But I think it's well worth a watch. I really do. And being as you, right now you can watch it for free on YouTube. Yeah, that's a no-brainer. All right. So, I couldn't find I Want to Be a Soldier from 2010. Um, Maybe I'll be able to find it later, maybe not. There have been some of these along the way that I haven't been able to find a copy to watch. But the third film I watched was Good Day For It uh, from 2011, um, starring not only Robert England, but we've got Robert Patrick and Lance Henriksen. Hal Holbrook is in this, very... Uh, not spring chicken, Hal Holbrook. He he was he was older. Keep in mind this was 2011. Um, but I I really enjoyed this one. Um, Robert Patrick actually plays a good guy who got in with a bad crowd 15 years ago, and his daughter um, had to have heart surgery or she was going to die. And he got hooked up with these really bad guys and he stole money from Lance Henriksen's character to pay for his daughter's surgery. And then um, he gave the money to um, his, well, I don't know if they were ever married. I don't think they were married, uh, but... It was like, you know, I'm guessing they were living together. So um, his girlfriend, his wife, his fiance, whatever you want to call her, he gave her father the money. And then he went into hiding for 15 years. And he starts conversing with his daughter after 15 years and she agrees to meet him at a cafe called Rose's Cafe. Um, however, Lance Henriksen and the gang, of which Robert England is, uh, he plays Wayne. Um, I can't remember if he's a brother or a cousin. He's either a brother or a cousin of Lance Henriksen's character. And they basically, they're like mob guys or something. If you steal from them, they'll, they're going to take you out. Uh, because they, you see a scene early on where they're really, really doing terrible things to this guy. And then when Lance Henriksen gets there, I guess he like cuts the guy up and stuff. And like, because Lance Henriksen has blood all over him later and he's washing it all off and stuff. But they've been looking for Robert Patrick's character, uh, Luke, for 15 years. And when they find out he's back, like, Lance Henriksen's character is like, ah, we're going back there and we're going to see if it's him. And meanwhile, uh, the mother finds out that her daughter has went to, to meet somebody at a cafe. 
I'm not sure if she knew that it was the girl's father or not, uh, or she was just worried, oh my gosh, what, you know, what kind of trouble is she going to meet up with? And it's thundering, so it's probably a good thing I will be off of here soon. Um, I didn't know it was going to storm tonight. Lovely. But anyway, I'm going to try to get through this. This is a really good movie. Some people might think, eh, it's a little hokey. It's trying to have a message there and yada, yada, yada. But overall, I thought it was a really good movie. And, you know, Robert England doesn't play a good guy on this one. He plays a sleazy snake in the grass killer uh, on this one. But he plays it great. You know, like I said, Robert England can play any part you give to him and play it to the hilt. And he certainly does with the character of Wayne in this. Um, so um, before I lose power or anything like that, I'm going to go ahead and give uh, the rating for this one. Okay. So I'm also going to give this one four deadites out of five. Um, all of these movies were enjoyable in one way or the other. I really, really liked all of them. Uh, even Black Swarm, which was, you know, a little goofy and had some CG uh, wasps and, and effects and stuff. Um, but all of them were very watchable. I could see myself going back and re-watching these again. Um and that thunder's not getting quieter, it's getting louder. So, that is probably my cue to get the heck out of Dodge, right? So, I don't know what that noise was. But, anyways, I want to thank everybody that, you know, tuned in to watch this when I do get it uploaded. If you're, if you're watching it and you enjoyed it, I... I appreciate your support of the channel and I also appreciate your support of me doing more of these, you know, half live streams and half pre-recorded movies. But be sure to tune in to Apples and Oranges tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time when I will be talking about Night of the Living Dead 90. And uh, I'm out of here, folks. I'm off like a dirty shirt. But before I go, I want to remind everybody, as always, to be kind to one another and blaze that trail. Have a great night, folks, and I'll see everybody next time.